Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoever's. This is old school preaching from the Word of God, guys. I hope, uh, you know, I just started promoting my video, putting some money into it. Just, you know what, guys, the whole point of doing what you can for the Lord is, uh, you know, investing in the things of the Lord. And we, we all need to invest our time, our effort, you know, I, you got to make every opportunity you meet people to share the gospel some way or another. You know, sometimes, sometimes all you can do is show mercy. Sometimes all you can do is encourage the person or sometimes give them wisdom because a lot of us are not that wise. I'll be the first one to raise my hand. It is God's word that makes us wise. It's God's word that speaks, shows, a. um, you know, turns light. The you know, we, we, this life travels in darkness, guys. You know, there's darkness all around us, and what God does again is He uh, illuminates our lives. It shows us uh, the truth of the Word of God. You know, uh, one thing that we can do, guys, is as we grow in Christ, is to learn to meditate on the Word of God. You know. Meditating on the Word of God, um, you know, something, meditation is something that God taught His people, actually, uh, in the Word of God. Uh, before, the, before the children of Israel, uh, they were always encouraged to meditate on the Word of God, to meditate on, on what God says. What does it mean to meditate? You know, standing there like in our own position is not what we call meditating. Meditating is to, to evaluate your life. Um, you know, the Bible says here about meditation... Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, he says, uh, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in, the, in thy house. You know, God wants us to encourage using the word of God around us, uh, in, in our family. You know, before they used to pray before they ate dinner. You know, they gave thanks to the Lord for their provisions. I don't see too many people doing that. I don't even do that no more. So what is that telling us? You know, the Bible tells us that we should meditate on God's word when we lie down. We should meditate on God's word when we rise up. You know, the Bible likens it to binding it on our forehead. It should be our uh, presence. Uh, you know, uh, my brother Chui, I used to always watch him, you know, good, good example of a Christian brother, but I used to watch him on his breaks. He would go get his coffee and sit in his car and read his Bible. And, you know, it kept your mind focused on the things of the Lord. It kept your mind on the things of, you know, put thy, uh, bind them upon thy forehead um, uh, as frontlets between thy eyes. The Bible says, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and thy gates and the doorways. I mean, that, that's how much... You know, when I first got saved, I had God's word on all the doorways of my house. You know, um, it's an amazing statement coming from the Lord. He wants us to understand the Bible. You know, I try to minister sometimes to my brother-in-law, and he says, I don't need you to tell me anything. And this is for you, Brother Ponce. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you. You know, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's, when you have a discussion with somebody and you realize that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of resentment in the word of God. Um, you know, because he won't take no exhortation. He won't, he won't even take, uh, you know, the pa uh, a pastor reading the Bible to him. That means, uh, again, uh, that uh, that uh, you know the Word of God is, um, you know, the word the Word of God is is being preached. You know, sometimes we don't understand why. Ishmael is calling me twice in a row. Oh my God! I'm... Okay, so what does it mean to meditate on God's word? It's it, it is that we we put it on our you know on our mind, in our thoughts. You know, God wants us. I swear to God, I'm getting all these calls from like everybody lately. Uh, that's a picture of me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, guys. Uh, now, <laughs> now my dad's cutting the lawn. You know, how do we meditate on God's laws? You know, when we drive down the road, 
You know, there's always advertising for liquor, for billboards. You know, in, in a sense, God wants us to put it all around us. So, so you know, we have billboards. We have, you know, they, you know, it likens it to liquor signs, likens it to pictures of football players in front of the liquor store. Uh, that's a kind of an oxymoron. Uh, people who are totally in shape promoting, you know, alcohol. I don't think most most people who are really in good shape drink. You know, they, they want to keep their mind and their body in top shape. You know, and that's what happens when we read the Word of God, guys. We keep our mind in top shape. We 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 we, we wash our minds, our thoughts. You know, um, you know. I could understand why people drink and buy and, and buy beer because do you remember back in the day you would open a magazine, you'd see a Marlboro uh, advertising, or you on the billboard you'll have. You know, they still have these here around here. You know, you'll see there. Uh, you know, Bud Light or Coors Light. You know, the Lord knows uh, again uh, what He's doing. When so when He tells us to, you know, put God's word in, word in our in our in our minds in our in our lives. Uh, he wants us to understand that it is your strength. You know, our strength comes from understanding who God is and who what God desires for us. And, and, and you know, um, there's a lot of booby minds, booby traps. Uh, in, in this world, you know, the enemy wants us to be a drug addiction. The enemy wants you to join a gang. The enemy wants you to join this or do that or do this. And, and, and you know, it, it's human nature to be evil without the Lord. And we, what God does is he, he, he gives you his word so we could be encouraged to be the best us. We all make mistakes. You know, we all go through uh, sanctification. But God told his people that we were, they were to ride his word on the doorpost, on their gates, uh, to wear them in, on their garments. Um, the word of God tells us uh, that we are to meditate while we're walking. Uh, we are to talk to God in prayer when we stand up, when we lay down, when we sit down. You know, we are to talk about it when we went to bed until we went to sleep. God asks his people to meditate on God's word. You know, so so the one of the greatest exhortations God wants you to do is meditate, but people don't even read God's word. It's all about making money. It's all about coming up. It's all about having, you know, this stuff I buy right here, I get most of them, I got, I got a goodwill. You know, I haven't spent too much money, but I, 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 you know, I'm not the richest guy in the world. God, I know I'm not, but I use whatever gifts and callings that God gives me for the building up. You know, for many times I, I used to, out of my own pocket, used to buy Bibles and give them out. You know, give give an offering to the church. You know, to the church service. You know, give. Uh, you know, there's so much, so many things we can do for the Lord. But really, you know, one of the, the today's messages, guys, can I encourage you to meditate on His Word? You know, uh, th there's a very. You know, I'm going to end this. There's a very interesting statement if you read the Bible in Psalm one. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and the law does he meditate day and night. You know, to meditate is to ruminate, ruminate, to bring to mind, to consider over and over. Ruminating is what a cow is doing when he's chewing on her cud. You know, the Lord... How the old cows goes out in the morning while he is grass is fresh and dew she grazes. Then the sun comes up and the weather is hot. The cow lies down under a tree or stands there in the shade. You see her chewing and you wonder what in the world the cow is chewing. Well, she will chew there for an hour or two. Well, she is meditating, my, 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 my Christian brothers. Friend, this cow is bringing the grass she ate up in the morning. And we are told that the cow has complex stomach out of one chamber and the transferring it to another. In the process, she is going to do it over and over again, chewing it up for good. Now, you and I need to learn to do that in the process. We are to get the word of God, read it. We are to have it in our minds. We are to have it and meditate it. Uh, every word, you know, every, every part of scripture. I, I like this one. You know, if the Lord Jesus Christ already came once as a baby, what makes you believe he's not going to come again? 
Guys, meditate on the word of God. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the sore scornful. You know, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Many times uh, the Lord has spoken to me through, uh, you know, the Lord brings a, a scripture up to, up to remembrance. And I say, okay, Lord, this is how you're leading me. You know, or, or sometimes I'll, I'll remember a scripture I don't even remember reading. And it comes and it gives me insight on what God wants me to do. You know, the, the, the word of God is powerful, more powerful than a double-edged sword, my friends. And I hope uh, today and tomorrow you get like a cow, and you, met, you chew on the cud, and you eat of the, you know, the green grass uh, uh, and the green pastures. You know, he is the great shepherd, my friends. He knows exactly how he's leading us. You know, he, he's leading you today. Um, you know, sometimes I, I, I wonder because, you know, how I'm going to pay this bill or I'm going to pay that bill. What am I going to do or this or that? And I say, Lord, it's a, you know, um, I trust you no matter what. You're going to move you, me. You're going to move the circumstances. You're going to change uh, whatever uh, you have to make it better. You know, I'm telling you, uh, Jesus already came once. What makes you think he's not going to come again? I know that God's word, um, just remember guys, uh, we have great preachers of old uh, that encourage us to, to study the Bible. Uh, we ha I remember uh, driving around many, many years oh, listening to Pastor McGee on the radio. I remember uh, going to church and listening, going through verse by verse, chapter by chapter through the Bible. I remember going to prayer meetings. I remember we would meditate on God's word over and over. Um, some of the churches had things called afterglow when the spirit of God came and spoke to people and, and some people would stand up and give a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation. Uh, re I remember many years of teaching Bible Bible study with the, 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 kid, the uh, youth, youth camp and youth, uh, you know, the children during service, you know, take them in the back and just teach them the Bible, you know. You know, frankly, we could use anything we can to, to give God's glory, guys. You know, what matters is that you put God's word on, in your heart. It matters that uh, you believe that God has saved you, it's called you, and no matter how old you get or no matter what you go through and no matter what's in front of you, that God has the, you know, God is outside of time. He's moving heaven and earth, guys, one of the greatest gifts of knowing the Bible is understand that many times God moved heaven and earth for one person in the Bible. You know, God put it in their heart of, of Caesar, one of the Caesar kings, to make a census so that Jesus' parents, uh, Joseph and Mary, would go to Bethlehem and pay their taxes and have Jesus born exactly where God predicted in Bethlehem. So you understand that the Spirit of God is going to open the Word of God to you. That Spirit of God is going to be your teacher. The Spirit of God uh, uh, shows you the truths. You know, it brings joy. It brings rejoicing. You know, when you meditate on God's Word, uh, he, he opens up the, uh, the the truths of the Word of God to, to encourage you, no matter your plight, no matter your circumstances, no matter your, uh, uh, your lot. The Lamb of God... Uh, has identified you as a born-again believer. He has identified you part of the bride of Christ. Like a sheep, you have a shepherd always on your, always making the best for you. You know, the Lord has said in the Bible that all of us have iniquity in us all. That's why we don't trust in our own righteousness. We trust that the final work of Jesus Christ, death, death burial, and resurrection, you know, uh, he died on the cross for us sinners, guys. You know, this is not about building, uh, you know, a repertoire or, or you know, these, the, the reason I give these messages, guys, that you would be encouraged, that you would be encouraged to read your Bible. Oh, how evil. He's telling me to read the Bible. You know, you know, you could do whatever you can, but can I always encourage you to read more, to pray more, to give more, to be more into the teachings of the Bible. Don't harden your heart. Many people these in these last days are hardening, hardening their hearts concerning the scriptures. You know, 
you don't become lukewarm and be distilled by the sweetness of the world. Understand that there's commentaries, there's concordances, there's Hebrew, there's uh, all these things that are available that from old Bible teachers. Uh, again, you know, you know every every teacher and preacher of the gospel needs to have a set of Bibles, set of commentaries. You know, if you want to. If you want to be used by the Lord, can I encourage you to start investing on good Bible teachers? You know, pay pay 120 bucks for their commentary on the whole Bible, and go from there. You know, whether it be Pastor Chuck, Pastor McGee, uh, uh, Layman Strauss, you know, John Corson, Raul Rees. You know, be convicted that you know that you know when you come before the Lord in the last days after you die at the bema seat of Christ. You're going to come under investigation by God. This investigation is going to show us how, how we were to our obedience to the faith. You know, you know how uh, we uh, obeyed the Bible. You know, there's an investigation coming for all of us. You know, there's an investigation for all those who reject Jesus Christ and are found at the white throne judgment. The investigation says they're guilty before a holy God. You know, you have the perfect right to start in the milk of the word and then grow into the meat of the word. You know, I hope uh, you're encouraged by this message. Again, and, and remember, sometimes you find yourself a character in the Bible, a little bit of Lot, a little bit of Abraham, a little bit of Noah. You know, you're telling people about that we're heading into the end times and nobody believes you. They laugh at you. They scorn. They mock you. You feel like a little bit of Noah. No one did it for 120 years. I've only been doing it for 20 years. And he preached the gospel. And only eight people got saved. Only eight. So what does that tell you guys? You know, we're a little bit of Peter. We, we deny the Lord sometimes in our lives. We're a little bit of John, you know, being put in prison and having to give a message that you basically, you, you know, you, you don't want to. But whatever your thoughts and patterns are, whatever you, you, how you study the Bible, please, bro, study the Bible. Um, because the closer we get to the end times, guys, there's not going to be too many of us. You know, I got about a couple of two years, maybe now, on, on YouTube, giving the Word of God. And I hope uh, uh, people, uh, you know, go back to the old videos. Learn the, the videos. Teach the videos. Because I, I did... I, I did I did about you know many many years at the feet of you know Pastor Noli, Pastor Dylan, um, Pastor Chuck, you know all these great Bible teachers. You know Pastor John John Johnston, you know Dave Johnson out of Santa Cruz Calvary Chapel. You know it's, it's Calvary Chapel School of Ministry. That's where I went through the Book of Romans, and then we did uh, I think uh, exert what's it called apologetics. Uh, I know it was another one another book but this you know if you have an opportunity to pay 50 bucks and go to the Calvary you know go to Calvary School of Ministry it's worth it you know every Sunday afternoon after church you know you get out of church around around noon and then around four o'clock you know you study you go for four hours you know they teach verse by verse chapter by chapter guys you know there's a lot of things that we can do you know and I am personally convinced that whatever the Lord does in your life when you add God's word in you um, what only it's only going to make you stronger wiser you know and better for what's coming upon the whole world remember we're heading into the end days we're heading into the end times the church age is coming to an end the rise of of the beast system, the rise of the ten kings, the rise of the falling away from God. Uh, basically, not even falling away. It's going to be Nazism um, when it comes to, you know, Caesar is God, Hitler is God, and then at some point the, revel the beast of Revelation will declare himself to be God, and they'll be they'll have their own church and their own religion and their own false prophet. So again, guys, hope today's encouragement uh, to be obedient to God's word, to be obedient to God is very important, and to obey the Bible, um, no matter where you are in your walk. May the Lord bless you, be girded, be strengthened. The Lord is coming. He's coming quickly.